Hi, welcome back. I must confess I'm a bit uh, confused as to which chapter we're on. So this is the start of a new chapter and uh, I've got a piece of oak. I've got a guitar body with the back, very nice. I've got the front roughly sanded, looking nice with some spots of super glue just to fill some holes. They'll be sanded down later. The neck, it's been declamped, it's looking very nice. Smoothed out the sides. It's a very nice effect with the black single stripe down there. Fretboard looks fantastic. But first of all, first job of the day is to put a centerpiece in the body. The neck's going to be a bolt on, so you need some strength there. Don't need it where the pickups are going, but it's going to be a through body string. So I definitely need some strength just there. My piece of oak isn't thick enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of alder on the top, a piece of alder on the bottom. I'm going to fit it into the body. Basically, we'll take it from there. I'm not going to show you because uh, you can get too much of a good thing. I'm just going to crack on with it and show you the end result. And, and as if by magic, here we have the centerpiece. What I've also done is I've sealed the side. You're going to see this through the sound hole. So I wanted it to look nice. On this side, I'm going to be uh, shielding paint going in there. Um, oak and the alder is in and it uh, got drilled some holes you can see those just for wires for the pickups I just need to make sure that that's nice and flush there's about a quarter of a mil lip on there so just send that it's added quite a bit of weight to the uh, guitar body that bit of oak but it's solid. Happy days. Okay, so we've got the neck in the vise. I've got my template. Because it's multi-scale, it's absolutely vital that you know where the strings are going. I've double checked, I know that that line there is perfect for the scale. And the same with the low E, everything in between should be spot on too. My true fret is the 10th fret and it's a 24 fret template. I've got some pre-drilled location marks. Just line this all up. The hole at the bottom is so that I can see the center line. And I can also see the center line at the top because it carries on through. So I'm just going to grab some clamps because you can never have too many clamps. That's within the centre mark, that's spot on too. Don't over tighten that clamp. Oh, he's over tightened it. Yes, it did. I 
I know you guys like to see a lot of clamping action so uh, well, I didn't speed this bit up check in again that it's in the right location The saw I'm using is a 0.5mm Japanese rip saw. It, it still does a good cut, so uh, away we go. This first one is for the nut. This could be a long job. Spot on. This is my normal working speed, obviously. Um, I don't want to show you how fast I normally work. So I slow the other parts of the video right down. And the reason I'm doing a voiceover on this one is uh, on the previous one, I did get pulled up by YouTube for having some very quiet music in the background so there's music in the background on this one too so we're doing it overdub so if my mouth isn't moving to my words I do apologize excellent remove the clamps I've got to do the second cut for the nut Excellent job there. It's worthwhile making a jig, but if you're going to make one, then uh, make sure it's absolutely spot on. I've used this jig before on another guitar. Uh, I know that was perfect. Well, it was perfect in my eyes, so happy days. Very nice. They're all about the right depth. I'm using 1.1 by two millimeter stainless steel frets. So when I sand and plane this thing level, it really does need to be absolutely spot on because there's just no real room for filing down 1.1 millimeter frets. I'm just waffling now. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what I'm saying because it's boring. So now I'm going to mark out the dimensions of the neck and we're going for a 44mm nut at the top. Accuracy is uh, quite important at this point.
At the, at the uh, 24th fret, we're going for 56 millimeters. I suppose by the time I get to doing the last couple of videos, I'll know where to put the camera. And then once I've done this, I'll just get my calipers and check. Look at the grain on that London plane, absolutely fantastic. The 55.8 we've got there, that's close enough for me. By the time I've put my pencil line on there, it'll be 56. And that's 43.9. Happy days. I'm just at the minute complaining about the fact that my steel rule isn't long enough. So I get another one, which is even shorter. Uh, so I will go out and buy myself a a stainless steel meter stick and you'll see that in another episode or another chapter should I say I should also, I suppose, apologise about the length of this chapter. It's about 23 and a half minutes long, but it's all important stuff. And if you're building a guitar for the first time, you need to know these kind of things. I learnt my guitar making skills from a book Crikey, from the 90s, I think the guy's name was Melvin Hislop or Hiscock. Book's still available, I think. Uh, if I'd have had somebody to be able to tell me where I was going wrong at the time, then perhaps I would have uh, made a better job of my first one. So just checking again. Yeah, with the thickness of the pencil now, that's 56. And this one is 44, so happy days. So I can, uh, I can now, this is ready to, to put on the planer, just check the fretboard's flat and it's uh, looking good. Or as I say in the video, it's beautiful. Perfect. I can plane right up to that line.
I'm quite happy to plane this down right down to that line. My planer set up quite well. Uh, I'm happy to just chuck it on there. And then I can put a vague shape in for the neck. Do the brake angle. And then I'm going to leave that just for a couple of days, just in case there's any movement. And then uh, once that's done, I can concentrate on doing templates for my volume and tone pots. And also there's a treble and rhythm switch to go on this guitar. Which I suppose then I could draw in the neck pocket. But now I'm going to plane this up. I'm back again apparently and I'm too excited not to cut this neck right now. I've drawn a bit of a break angle on there. I'm not sure what the angle is but it, uh, it looks good and for the eagle-eyed amongst you you'll note that the volute which I didn't know at the time or didn't realize at the time it's too far back. So I've got 22 mil at the uh, nut end It won't be 22 mil when it's finished. At the 12th fret, I'm 25 mil. At the bottom, I'm 35 mil. Easy to reduce that. So I'm now going to go to the bandsaw and uh, cut this out. Look where the volute is compared to the nut. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. And that crack I told you about has just been cut out. So the head there is going to be 10 mil thick. I've just cut those bits on the bandsaw from the scraps and I'll be gluing those to the head to make up the width. I think they're the wrong way around. Yep. So again, I know that you guys like to see a bit of gluing and clamp action. So uh, let's do it. And here I'm just talking about the fact that I've never put a volute on a guitar before. Um, well, I did once, but it, it looked absolutely hideous. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, I know what happens next. Yeah, let's get some glue. And a load of clamps. Careful with that glue fill, don't put too much on. Oh, that's a lot of glue. That is a lot of glue. Obviously using the best spreader in the world, finger. And just give these a quick rub as well. It uh, creates a bit of friction, gets the air out and uh, they'll stick a lot better. The first guitar I made was a coopered style, similar to this one, but it was an acoustic. And I don't think super glue was as super back then in the 90s. So uh, all those 
all those joins there that I did for the first guitar were all rubbed with PVA glue and I think I, I managed to get the whole thing built in about six hours the body ring which is pretty good and it's still still in one piece today and uh, if you continue following me then at some point after this competition is finished you will see me destroy that guitar to make it into something a little better it's traveled around uh, quite a f quite a few places and uh, it's a bit worse for wear so i will look at that at some point with a view to uh, totally redoing it still use the same basic body ring uh, but i'm going to put a new neck on it it's currently got a fixed neck so that should be interesting and i'm going to route it off the top of that guitar but that's another day let's get some clamping done I just wish I'd got a few more clamps. How many have we got on there? One, two, three, four, five. I'm sure we can get another five on there. At least by the end of this video, you'll know how to fit an F clamp or eight. Okay, so we've got eight clamps on there. That's not going anywhere. You let that dry. Uh, the neck did slightly bow when I cut it it was straight from there and it just dipped down here which in in the grand scheme of things is not a bad thing because uh, it's always worth just knocking a bit extra off your fret height at the bottom end just sort of uh, increased playability well that concludes another chapter thanks for watching if you like what I'm doing, click like, subscribe and hit the bell notification. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next one.